G'day everyone and welcome back to the second proper Fix-It Fingers Fiver. Today, my favourite and perhaps the most important topic for the beginning woodworker, power tools. But a quick apology to begin with, based on last week's episode on the hand tools. Now, this is awesome. I invited debate, I got debate, and I'm willing to make a concession. Instead of this, I probably should have had this. While that may be an essential handyman tool, this is meant to be about the woodworker. And a chisel, or a set of chisels, even cheap ones, is probably going to be more useful than a set of screwdrivers. If you haven't seen that episode, go and check it out. I'll chuck a link up the top. Right, let's get into my top five tools, but I will invite you that when the list ends, hang around. I'm going to spend a few minutes discussing something that was requested a number of times, and that is the price point and quality level of tools, and a few options such as corded versus battery kits. And I'll also share the secret of choosing the correct brand of power tool for you. Power tools. And if you hadn't picked it already, this is my preferred method of woodworking. I primarily use handheld power tools. So we're not talking about big bench tools such as my miter saw here. We're going to be talking about the things that you can pick up to start your power tool woodworking. Number one has to be it started with a drill. If you don't get that reference, go check out my very first video. A cordless power drill is going to be something that unless you're doing fancy joinery, you're going to use on pretty much every single DIY project. You will need of course some drill bits and some driver bits. This can do both and this is even a hammer drill too. I'm not going to go into those functions too much. It is something that you'll explore as you get familiar with the tool but basically you're putting holes in things and then you're going to be driving some screws into them. And a tool kit like this one is a nice little way to start. You'll figure out the other bits you need as you go along. Number one, a drill. Number two, a circular saw and of course these are basically what you call essential. We talked about the hand saw last week. Most of my cutting for a very very long time until I got that was done with this and to this day I still use a circular saw for a huge number of tasks. Getting the cordless one I do recommend. You can make guides for it which we'll go into a little bit later on in another episode and you want a decent blade. Blade will come with it though, it'll be good enough for you to start off. Circular saw cuts straight lines, not terribly accurately until you learn how to do it properly, but it is my primary cutting tool. Go back through my back catalogue, you'll see a huge number of projects I made basically with just a circular saw. Rip cuts, cross cuts, mitre cuts, it can do it all, except go around corners. Give me a minute. And the most loved and hated tool in the arsenal is a sander. This is one where you could possibly go for the corded one to save yourself the money. I was lucky I picked this up secondhand off Facebook Marketplace and I got it for half the price. Otherwise, I probably would have gone corded. You will, of course, need sandpaper depending on what type of sander you get. This is called a random orbital sander. It's sort of in the middle and is probably a really good place to start. We'll talk about grits and actually sanding later, but trust me, you will need a sander to make your projects look schmick, to take sharp edges off things, to make things fit, and to hide a few mistakes. A random orbital sander would be my suggestion for your first sanding device. Having said that I would go corded, this is a little beast of a unit. I get plenty of runtime off one five amp hour battery. It goes for ages. I don't use a jigsaw as often, but when I do, this little Roby has basically got me out of trouble. It was like $70 or $80, if that. Some good blades, which will not come with it, you're going to have to purchase those separately, are essential. There are different types of blades, depending on how sharp you want to curve, but that's what this machine is all about. It's a bit sucky at going dead straight, that's where you use this one, but as soon as you need to go around a bend, get into a tight spot, or push up close next to something, then this is going to be a more accurate tool and there are a few tricks you can pimp it out with as well. I use it as corded because, well, I don't use it that often. It's one of those halfway tools. You could probably go either way. I do find it is a little bit underpowered, this little one, when you're tackling hardwood. But generally speaking, that's not stopped me. I've done hardwood projects where I use quite a lot of jigsaw action. And last of all, what is probably my favourite tool. I know it's hard to pick favourites amongst all of these, but my trim router is 
my favorite tool. I use it in so many different ways. It is incredibly versatile. You can cut with it, you can rebate with it, you can dado or groove with it. You can do so many different things, edge profiles, surfacing. This tool is a one-man weapon. And it's also probably the most expensive and the least obvious, and really the least important. But this is a woodworking vlog, and if you're going to woodwork, then I would highly recommend becoming a woodworker with a router in your hand. There are lots of different styles. This is called a trim router because it's smaller, less power, more versatile. The big ones, like your big tritons, they're like the proper routers. Don't have one. Never needed one. Don't miss it. I'm going to have a whole episode dedicated just to the router. Do some research on what these babies can accomplish and you'll quickly see why I've included it in my top five. Having mentioned that, it's also more likely going to be one of the most expensive things because they don't tend to come in the kits. But I still cannot recommend highly enough adding a router to your arsenal as early as possible. Again, I like the cordless one, but you can go cheaper and more power with a corded variety. You will, of course, also need router bits. Again, when we go into the router in more detail, I'll explain a few of these and what they're for. This is a huge rabbit hole. Obviously, power tools, there are dozens of different types. They all serve a purpose. And as we said before, none of them are essential on their own. But if you are getting into the style of woodworking and DIY that I do here on this channel and that a lot of novices start out with, these five are going to get through the vast majority of your work. I have got others, I've built them up over time, but you really can make almost anything with what you see in front of you here today. All right, guys, you know the drill. If you disagree or you think there's something missing, what would you take out? What would you add in? Comment below. If you found today's information useful, then please do give it a thumbs up. And if you hang around by subscribing, then I promise I do get some projects out every so often, but I'll also be continuing this series in the near future with wood. What woods are you going to see when you start woodworking in Australia? Thanks for hanging around guys. Now let's go into a little bonus bit of information about the correct brand of power tools to buy and corded versus battery price points and a few other little side topics. But first, you might have just noticed me waving this around. It is the Japanese pull saw, the Ryoba, Ryoba. And I managed to find one on Amazon. I got it in under a week. Below you will find affiliate links. You may be familiar with them. They do not cost you any more, but if you purchase via those links, some of the tools and products that I feature on my channel, then I get a small kickback to help support me. This is the first commercialization of what I've done, and I hope it's not too offensive. Ignore it entirely if you wish, but I do thank anyone who wishes to support the channel in that way. All right, enough of that rubbish. Let's get into some of the finer details of hand power tools. As far as I can see, coming from my novice perspective, you've really got four levels of tools that are commonly available that you'll see advertised on YouTube and at your hardware store. You've got your budget variety, you've got your DIY or home handyman sort of variety, you've got your trade variety, and you've got your super professional variety. Now, the super professional, basically it starts with an F and ends in an S tool, and we're not even gonna go there today. Completely out of the scope of my channel and my budget for now. But if you wanna go drool on some tool porn, then by all means, check out the white and green boxes. That leaves us with three. Super budget. Here I'm gonna be talking about the two most commonly available Australian brands, that being Azito, the Bunnings cheap version, and Audi work zone is what they go by usually. I do not own any of those tools. I have owned some Azito tools, and there is a good reason why I no longer own any Azito tools. They are what you pay for. If you're gonna be doing this once every so often, then by all means, go for it. They are dirt cheap. There is absolutely no way that if you have any interest in starting a woodworking hobby, that you can't find a few bucks to cough up for some super budget tools. And for the most part, they will work. I know several woodworkers who use Azito tools and make kick-ass stuff. It doesn't mean you can't get building. For me personally though, I skip over them, but you can go that way. I've actually heard some really good stuff about the work zone stuff. 
the things from Audi. Go check out my mate Sumo. He does some really good reviews on some of their range of tools. They only have one major drawback because they're basically as cheap as a Zito, and from what I can see, they're probably a bit better than a Zito, but you can't get them all the time. You can't just nip down to Audi and pick up a circular saw from WorkZone because it won't be there. They only get released at certain times of the year, which is the biggest drawback that I can see from them. So they're our two super budget if you are running tight on the dollars. No shame in getting started with some basic stuff and stepping up later when you figure out what you need. Second, we'll go our DIY slash home handyman. And around me, there are two that I've come across. I've only used one of them. They are the Ryobi and the Bosch Green. Now, Bosch Blue is something different. We'll talk about them in a second. And I have basically heard nothing but good about either of them. They're in that halfway price point between a trade level tool and your super budget tool. But what you're getting tends to be a lot closer to this than it does to your Zito. They're gonna have less power, they may not last as long, and they are not designed to run all day, every day, if you're gonna be doing this fully hardcore. But for the weekend warriors, I have no problem at all with my Ryobi things. And while I haven't used the Bosch again, I've heard really, really good stuff about them. They are gonna be half the price of a trade level tool at times, but they are certainly not half the quality. They're gonna get you through, and I would recommend if you are starting out on those, looking at the Ryobi and the Bosch Green, because you don't have to cough up as much as you do for the higher level branded tools. Then we've got what was obviously my choice when we kicked it off. I've got a few tradie friends, I asked around for recommendations, but here is the biggest secret of choosing the correct brand of tradie tool. So we're talking the Makita, the Milwaukee, the DeWalt, the AEG, Bosch Blue, I'm missing someone, I'm gonna get in trouble, but they're the ones I can do off the top of my head. Here is the secret, you ready? What's your favorite color? Honestly, every single one of them have their fanboys. I like the teal. I went with them and pretty much, because I've gone with the batteries, I am locked into that system and that's what the tool companies are going to do. However, the variety that every brand offers, the quality that every brand offers, you're splitting hairs, don't stress about it. If you like red, get the fast ones, go for Milwaukee. If you happen to be built by Chris, then well, we all know what colors he prefers. Pick your brand, you're gonna be sticking with it, but that is of course, if you're on the battery powered tools like I am. There's no shame in any of them, just go for whatever you like. Honestly, I like Makita. This stuff has never let me down. Go with whatever will match the day core. Beyond that, the last little thing I want to tick off is battery versus corded. There are some quick advantages and disadvantages of each. When I first moved into this garage, it was a bare slate. The only power was the light bulb, so I basically had to go for the batteries because I had a charging station outside. I didn't have the availability of corded tools. These days, because I've got power, I'm running a mixture of both, and it will be up to you. The primary advantage of the power corded tools is they are cheaper. You're probably looking at 30 to sometimes 50% cheaper for a corded tool than you are for a battery tool. The primary disadvantage of the corded tools is of course, they've got a damn cord on them and you can't move them around. Pick and choose which ones you want. For your drills and circular saws and that, I really, really recommend going for the cordless if you can because you're just going to be moving them around all over the place. You don't want to be tied down, particularly for your drill. It's been hard to find a corded drill these days, I think. But otherwise, you're going to get more power and more stability from a corded tool as well. You don't have to keep changing the batteries all the time. And honestly, these things are probably the most expensive part of any tool you buy. So when you are starting out, if you can buy a kit that comes with a couple of batteries, you're gonna want at least two or three, and of course the charging station, then make sure you get those few batteries right at the start because they are very, very expensive to buy aftermarket. And the last little hint I'll give you is the tool shops and the tool brands very, very often have redemption offers. You know, buy a five piece kit, get a free tool, buy a five piece kit, get two free batteries or something along those lines. Keep your eyes out for that and you can save several hundred dollars in getting yourself set up to begin. Right, so summary, nothing wrong with cheap tools if that's all you can afford. 
If you can, I recommend Trade. Pick whatever brand is your favorite color, and I like the battery tools primarily. However, the corded will save you a few bucks and can have a little bit more power. Got it? Good. Apologies to anyone from overseas if these brands are unfamiliar to you, but as we said, this is an Australian focused little vlog, and I hope that that information is at least mostly transferable to the brands that you have overseas. Catch you next time. See you soon.